Alrighty, welcome to Ellis Mowers. Today, we're going to work on this Weed Eater 22 inch 500 series Briggs & Stratton Classic push mower. Um, hopefully a quick project for us. Hopefully it's just a quick engine swap onto a new deck and let me show you why. <laughs> Check this out. Not one, not two, but three broken deck brackets on it. Now, is the shaft bent? I'm not sure. I haven't been able to get it. I haven't turned it over on its side yet. We can check real quick, but I bet that the... I've got a theory after we check the, under the side here. As long as the shaft's not bent, because the blade looks good on it. From what I can tell. Onto the naked eye, the shaft looks pretty good. From what I can tell. We'll need uh we'll need everything here. But let me show you why I think it threw all of the brackets on the frame of this. And this whole handle assembly is just trashed anyway, so it's, you know, time for this to go to the dump, the frame, the motor, I hope not. Oh gosh, I threw a bunch of oil in there. The, the motor's got compression, obviously it has oil in it. The oil is pretty dark. As we can see, pretty black. It'll need a primer bulb and a carb diaphragm at the very least. I don't see any cracks in the gas tank, which is good. But check out the whole assembly here for the throttle. You see how they have this throttle spring all the way, just wrapped all the way around here? So this thing right here was running wide open, most likely. And so, I can't remember exactly what way is wide open, but I think when you pull it back like that, I think that's when it's wide open. So they had this spring wrapped around. It's missing the governor's spring to it. So I think they've been running this thing wide open. Um, it's vibrating and then ended up taking out all of the, the deck brackets on it. So I got a good blade out of it, a good motor, some good wheels, handle, one of these bail cables, which is nice. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I went ahead and put lube on the uh, bolts last night and let them sit overnight so my plan is to just being able to be able to impact them all off I'm not gonna put it in the garage to do this because I don't want it to leak oil out all over the garage but what I'm gonna do is take out the bolts for the mounting bolts which hopefully will come off I don't really see it leaking oil anywhere, so I think we're alright on that end. Um, and like I said, we'll see what's going on with it. Um, take the blade off, obviously, and take the rest of the motor off. I might take it over here into the grass so it doesn't leak oil on the driveway. I've already got that Husqvarna leaking oil on the driveway like crazy. There's, been too lazy to pull it out into the yard. Not lazy, but I just haven't really wanted to pull it out into the yard any. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay it on its side over here. Let me grab the, nest, the tools necessary and find a deck that's gonna be a donor for this thing, and we'll get we'll get rocking and rolling with it. And uh, See if we can find a good deck to put this on and a good mower to uh, to make out of it. I got this for free, by the way. So, no money in it. The diaphragm, I had to buy an air filter housing. Actually, I might have one. I might just need to find a bolt for it. But uh, a couple other things that will be good. So, here's a good viable candidate for this engine. Um, just an impact with a 9 16 took the blade off. It took the um, retaining bolts off as well. 
so we are in business when it comes to that we have all three bolts I don't know where I put the third one out but there's my blade bolt only difference is I got a 20 inch blade versus a 22 inch blade that I'll need um, so like I said all I did was take off the three mounting bolts for the engine and the blade the shaft I think the shaft is bent darn um, We'll see, it may not be bad enough on a 20 inch blade, I bet on the 22 inch it was vibrating like crazy, especially with it wide open throttle. And it could just be that I don't have the engine turned up right either. Or, let's see. I don't know, I'm tempted just to put it on and see how bad it vibrates. If it's real bad, then we won't worry with we won't worry with that crankshaft. But but we'll see if we have to go this far. I have a good classic Briggs over here that has a good shaft, but the I broke off all the bolts trying to get it off. So I could change out the sump potentially, which is still not an easy thing to do. There's my third bolt. Like I said, we might we'll experiment with this. We'll slap it on this deck first and we'll see we'll see what we got. Um like I said, I think the shaft's a little bit on this, but I don't know until I put it on there. Um again, it's been running wide open too, so it could be a combination of a bunch of things that caused the deck to to bust out like that but we'll find out um let me get this engine and this mower deck onto my workbench in the garage i'll set y'all up in the garage and we'll put this engine back on all right she's looking better already we'll see how well she runs here in a few minutes i have a feeling i have to change out the that crank looks a little It looks a little bent. I'm not I'm not counting it out just yet. So what I've done in order to hopefully prevent from the same fate happening with this mower as happened to the other mower is that I put deck or little spacers in there like they originally came on that other mower, but we're not on it when I got it. I had a couple of these spacers here. So putting that on there, I'm gonna take the I've tried the half inch impact before and it burned me before so I'm gonna take my little um, 3 8 inch impact here the 19.2 volt and just come in and pop pop these on let's see if I can show you there we go They pop them on, I'm going to do that to the other two, and then I'm going to source me a, a, a blade, and I'll get this thing off, and we'll uh, see, if it, see if it runs, if we are going to have to put another, or if we're going to have to use that other motor over there, right there, and we'll see what happens. Alright, so we got the new engine on. One thing I noticed is y'all probably noticed it earlier in the video that they had this backwards it was around like this like the the piece was in the opposite direction just the way they had this rigged i will get a governor spring for it i did pull this out a little bit and hopefully i can at least get it to fire and we'll see how it runs and now I'm, i've also got a bell cable and i have a spring that I need to put back on, which I'll do off camera unless I can do it right here. But I'll put that spring back on. I'll slide the bail cable in here. And then uh, we'll spray some starter fluid in there and see if 
it runs and if it runs if it vibrates any all right so i did just what i said with the bail cable and the spring right there and so now we have a working cable like i said i'm going to fix the springs here in just a little bit but i'm going to spray some starting fluid in to see if it'll kick over and see if it i can tell if it's vibrating any. So like I said, it's got a lot of smoke in it. I can feel it vibrating some. We'll see how it, we'll see if it's really bad whenever we get down to it. For the next order of business, we know that I'm gonna eventually take this carb and use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the gas tank off of it. Like I said, I think it vibrated a little bit. We'll see if it's bad enough to warrant having to use that other engine over there but for now i'm going to take the half inch off right here and the three eighths inch off in the front and take this linkage off source another governor spring and we'll see if uh we'll get down to the diaphragm i'll show you the diaphragm and put a new one on and then we'll see if we can get this thing to run further now all right so i've got the gas tank off the mower here i have this diaphragm, which is in rough shape, really rough shape. Probably the original diaphragm of the mower, which, according to the engine shroud, oh, I can't see it because it's so oily. Oh, six, I think is what it says. So it wouldn't surprise me. I think this mower's been sitting a little while, too. So we'll see what we have here. What I'm going to do is peel this off. I'm going to drain out all of it. I'm going to show you all on camera. I peeled it off. We're going to drain out all of this old gas and soak it in some carb cleaner. I've got a new gasket. Remember, the little, the little rubber piece goes on the bottom followed by the actual gasket. I've got some legit gaskets. I had been using them cheap Chinese ones, and I finally bought some from Mower Parts Warehouse that are off. Uh, hundred times better and not too much more cost wise clean all this out we'll put the new diaphragm on it and then we'll uh, actually we'll put it all back together while i'm out at it i'll put a, a primer bulb on it as well super easy to do you just take the tabs on the side push the old one out put the new one in and we will uh see what we have results wise i'm really hoping this thing isn't vibrating that bad because i really don't want to take the sump off of it and have to change that out. So I ended up sourcing a spring, I guess you could say close enough to what I need. Um, probably need to bend it in a little bit on one side to help prevent it from going, but looks like the springs are gonna operate the way that they need to, even though that one stretched out a little bit and that one's been around a little bit. It's not really a science with these things, it's just to get them to where they run right and then the governor kicks in whenever you put it under a load so um like i said the big wild card is how bad does it vibrate i know it vibrates a little bit and what method we're going to try to use to prevent it from vibrating so let me crank it up hopefully it'll run for us and uh, we'll see what we got
vibrating some, I would say. I think I've got it running just a little bit on the hot side. So I'm going to back the throttle off a little bit. See if we can get it to run a little bit better. Uh, if not, I've got a way that I could potentially make it better. But we'll see if we go to those measures here. Yeah, it's vibrating some, and it, it's exacerbated by the little thin, cheap deck that it's on. Oh, man, we'll see. Let me see how the uh, potential engine swap might go. I got oil leaking down at the bottom, too, so this thing's pretty much done, from what I can tell. We've got that going on. We're about, let's see. We're a smidge off on this side. So I'm wondering if I can shim this side up a little bit and see if that will help things out any. And if it does, what I'll do is I'll let it cool down and then I'll add some high temp gasket sealer on that to see if that'll fix it. Um, so I'm just going to shim it out right here on this side and see if that'll help us out a little bit in terms of it not vibrating as much because it's just slightly off, ever so slightly. So we'll see if, we'll see if shimming the blade out will help it a little bit to the point where it's not unbearable and we'll see what, uh, we can do after that. All right, so here's the current situation. I have two, these two engines here. One that has the good straight shaft, one with the bent shaft on it. I've got PB Blaster working on them. I've got these little jaw pullers on it to give it a little bit of um, encouragement, so to speak. My jaw, I cannot find good jaw pullers. These are the Harbor Freight ones that they've bent. This is my second set of them. So I might have to go to a three jaw puller here before long, buy a nice, nice one from hardware store, Lowe's Home Depot, etc. So I'm just going to let these sit overnight with the PB Blaster. Hopefully they'll soak and they'll work. And if they don't, then we're just going to sacrifice the blade adapters in order to, and then take the wire, the wire wheel and just clean off the shaft in order to get these sump or these, um, these things off here uh, shouldn't be terribly difficult especially since this one's coated in oil to get them off um, I just have to be careful not to break off any of the plates on the side there as we do it but I will uh, let these sit overnight and then we'll attack this again tomorrow um, and hopefully we can get these plates off and what I might also do, just for kicks, is put some lube on this and see if I can get these freed up and take them off with the vice grips. Because if I can do that, all I have to do is swap the gas tank over. But, like I said, I don't know. I don't know if that'll be enough to get them off or not. And they're broke off too far inside for me to weld a nut or anything onto them. So I might throw some PB Blaster on those as well just for kicks and see if we can get them to loosen up. And if we can get those two to loosen up, 
because I think I got that one out. Yeah, I got that one out perf just fine. Then, like I said, we'll just take this whole engine and just swap it over. Um, it'll need some seafoam treatment in the oil because there was some water in it. But it's got compression in it, and I know it will turn over, so that's all we need to know. So onward for the night, and we'll check back in with this tomorrow and see if I can get these blade adapters off and potentially get these bolts off. Alrighty y'all, welcome to Ellis Mowers. We are going to look at this Husqvarna today. Um, super nice lawnmower. 46 inch cut, 20 horsepower. It's got the uh, pedal operated hydrostatic with cruise control. I've got the uh, discharge chute for it, just have to put it back on. Um, seat's in good condition overall. Um, steering wise, all that's in good condition from what I can tell. Um, and it's a 2007 model. Is indicated by the little sticker right there, made in 11 of 2007. This lawnmower looks like it's in good shape, like I mentioned. The blades are even in good shape on it. For the most part, I just need to sharpen them. All the belts look good, the deck looks good. This lawnmower just has one big problem, and it resides with. Uh, I'll give you a hint and remember what year this was made. Look at what it has under the hood. One of them notoriously horrid Kohler Courage 20 horsepower engines. Um, here's the sticker for it. An SV600S is the model number for it. It's made in uh, June of 2007. So what I have been told about this mower, I got this mower plus a John Deere, oh, I got to look in the garage, John Deere 165, or, yep, 165 John Deere, Hydro, got them both for $150, which is a great, great deal, I would think, because um, this mower right here is a $700 to $800 mower all day long if I can get this thing running right. Um... So, they have or I have already noticed that they had already taken quite a few things out of it. There is no oil whatsoever to be found in it. However, it does have compression. The reason why it has no oil in it is because it has leaked it all out. And it has leaked it pretty severely. It is it has the classic Let's see, the bolts on the top have not really come out of it, which is a good thing. And I don't really see a ton of oil leaks up top, which is good. Most of my oil leak is right here at the valve cover, and then also at one other spot, and it's a pretty big spot. Right there, you see that? I got myself a cracked block right here. And it goes all the way down under the mower, under the um, on under the block right there. So that's exciting. Um, I have watched Terrell Fixes All do one of these, and uh, I am going to attempt to fix it. Probably not as good as Terrell, but I'm still going to attempt to fix it because I really think that I can get this thing running. And running good. What I want to first try out. Everything's complete on it otherwise. What I want to try out first is I just want to put some oil in it. And turn it over to see if it will run at all. Um, I was told that it has a brand new carburetor on it. Which looks relatively new. Um, I, think every, I think the air filter is in good shape and all that good stuff too. So... I'm hoping that all I need to do is fix the um, 
fix the cracked block on the motor. I don't see any other cracks in it at this point in time. I'm going to take off, obviously, the air filter and all that, all that just to make sure that I don't have any issues with it. And also just to see simply how many hours I've got on the motor. I don't have, I don't have any idea how many hours are on this lawn tractor. I would guess probably in the three to four hundred range, but I'll put a battery in it and we'll see. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, Husqvarna and Craftsman are made by the same company. At least at this time, um, as of 2020, they have Husqvarna Outdoor Products has ceased operations of residential equipment and all of the stuff that you see has been um, sent over to China from all the sources that I have seen which they Husqvarna had stopped making Craftsman whenever Lowe's bought them out and everything's just an MTD now basically so let me put the dipstick back in we'll uh put some oil in this thing i'm gonna put a battery in it and i'm just gonna see if it's gonna run i'm not gonna run it very long obviously because of the way that the cracked block is but i do want to see it run and then after i see it run we're gonna go ahead and take apart all this uh take apart the top end here and uh or on a bucket engine would this be the bottom end <laughs> we're gonna take off the top of the engine here and uh get some Loctite, get some JB Weld, and see if we can stop the oil leaks. We're going to do some RTV on the valve cover gasket as well, and see if we can get more life out of this Kohler Courage. I think we can. Um, I could make dumb Kohler or Courage jokes and stuff like that, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to pull it right over here. I'm going to drain the oil out, or I'm not going to drain the oil out. I'm going to put about, I'm going to put some, of uh, just put some oil in it, just to see if uh, we can get it to turn over oil and battery. So let me go ahead and do that. Alrighty, so here's the deal on this. <laughs> I had it on the bench. I tried to take the sump cover off, but I cannot, for the life of me, get the blade key off. And I cut the blade key actually all the way through. And it ain't budging, so I'm I'm confident that it's not going to come off. I put a new blade on it. This is the other engine that I had. It seems like it's got a lot of sludge and buildup and stuff inside of it. But I have heard this thing kick over before. So I'm going to throw a little sea foam in it just to see if I can get some of that sludge and whatnot out of it. Um, and I know it's going to smoke for days. Uh, didn't have a well it had a gas tank and carb on it however the gas tank had actually been rusted completely through because of water that was in it Corro corrosion got it actually it was corroded so badly it actually um, put a hole in between the where the diaphragm sits and where the in the main part of the gas tank so the gas tank was no good I'm gonna put a gas tank on it the thing I want to figure out first though is if I can get this thing to turn, if I can get this thing to fire. Uh, I know it's got a bunch of oil and stuff in it right now, so I'm just gonna see if I can get this thing to come to life. And if I can, then I'll go ahead and swap gas tanks and stuff over on it, and we'll see if we can get it to run. Um, oh, also, so this is the one that had the broken base plate on it, uh, where the bolts broke inside of it. I didn't bother with that one, but this bolt was good, so I put in. A bolt in there and then I was able to drill a hole to get this bolt to get a bolt nut through here and so it's secure on there I've sold many mowers with a broken um, mounting bolt as long as you get two out of three you're usually all right so and I also put spacers on the bottom down there to help distribute it so let's see if we can get this thing to run or to at least fire for us.
think it's either got a low compression or a stuck valve. I'm not sure. I think it's got a stuck valve on it because um, I'm pulling it and you hear it like popping and popping everywhere wouldn't surprise me if it does have a stuck valve on it I might granted that it's not rusted on there take off the head bolts and see so let me get it back on the bench I think I can save this engine this engine right here is it's leaking from everywhere and it's just completely toast so I, want, I really want to see if I can save that engine. If I can save that engine, then we'll use it. And we'll use it on that mower right there. Um, but I didn't take the head off, so let me get it back on the bench here. Okay, so we have a stuck intake valve. Um, the exhaust valve is open. The intake valve is supposed to be closed. Um, it doesn't look like the seal is bad. It just looks like the valve is just stuck. So let me take off the two quarter inch and we're going to see if we can get a little bit of lubricant and just tap it and see if we can free it. I've been able to successfully do this to one mower before. So I'm going to see if I can get it with this one as well. Alright, so I've got this little cover off. Look at how bad this is in here. Holy moly. I want to take some... See all that gunk and stuff on the valves? I'm going to take some brake cleaner and clean this off. And then I'm going to take a little bit of lube right there to the valve and see if I can uh, get it off. Alright, let me show you a couple, little bit of brake cleaner, a little bit of WD-40, and here's what we got. Pardon the clanking, but it's just the way I got it on the bench here. So we've got that fixed. Just need a little bit of encouragement. I just had to tap it a little bit with a hammer. Very, 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 very lightly with a hammer. Because you don't want to bend them things. Um, it just needed freeing up. So let me put this cover back on. And, uh... Let's see... A little tricky to get it around the exhaust, but we're gonna put this cover back on, and then we will uh, take it over to the. I'll put the head back on it, and then we will uh, take it outside and see if we can get this thing to fire. Obviously, we saw that the spark plug was firing, so this thing should run. It needs a killer clean. I'm just gonna throw some sea foam in it after I've changed the gas tank and stuff over, but who knows? This is just kind of an experiment, honestly. I just want to see if I can get something to run. And if I can, then, hey, you know, you make about $50, $60 on it, and you go on to the next project. And you learn something, too. All right, so we got, like I said, we got the valve fixed. The oil is good. Now, um, I put a little sea foam in the oil. Hopefully, it'll clean some of the mess out that's in it. Um, this thing, I'll be surprised if it, if it runs. I'll be happy if it runs, but man, this thing right here is going to smoke up the entire block if this thing will crank up. Well, so let's see what we got.
I forgot to put those bolts back in. Oh man, leaked a lot of oil out. <laughs> Oops. Let me put the bolts back in, and then we'll run it. Holy moly. All right, let me put the bolts back in, and then we'll run it. So an observant eye probably also noted that I had it upside down. I also need to put the cover back on it here. The cover bolt. I am slacking today. Holy moly. Uh, so let me get the cover bolt. And uh, I'll just get the impact because that's quicker. Put the cover bolt on and now we'll see if it runs. So I washed everything off. We got the finished product here. Uh, the Briggs sticker fell off of it, but that's not really a big deal. I uh, found an air filter for it. Air filter, I cannot get it tighter than that, which is weird. But it's not rattling or vibrating or anything like that. So I'm okay with that. I'm just really happy this thing runs. Um, obviously, I got the new blade on it. I think I showed you. It's one of them universal blades. They're not my favorite, but it does work on this mower. And considering how nice the deck is, and actually how nice the engine and everything cleaned up on it too, the motor's not smoking at all, which is great. Um, and also put a pull rope, another pull rope on it, um, another pull rope handle on it, excuse me. The pull rope seems to be good. Um, changed the oil in it, washed it up. Now we've got a good push mower for somebody. Um, it's kind of nice because uh, with all the time I worked on it, I'm happy that I have a finished product. Um, so what we determined was I used, thankfully, the gas tank and everything was good on this weed eater mower that we started out with. And I was able to take off the, because this one's like leaking oil from everywhere. So I didn't even bother with it. But 
um, took the gas tank and stuff off of that um, and we were able to make that one obviously the deck I still need to break this deck down at a later time whenever I got a little bit of time I'm gonna do that um, just gonna take the wheel assemblies and stuff off because those are usually pretty good to have lying around but we've got this thing finished now um, happy, really happy with how it turned out again I've sold many mowers that have only two mounting points on them and this one's smooth pretty smooth so I'm not afraid about or I'm not I don't anticipate them wallowing out or anything like that so let me I just washed it hopefully there's no water on the plug and we'll see if we can get this thing cranked Honestly, I'm very surprised that the thing even runs as well as it does. Because, um, like I said, there was a lot of moisture in the motor. A lot of uh, just condensation everywhere on this thing. Um, like I said, I ran through, ran some sea foam through it. Changed the oil in it. It's doing better. It's still not 100%. However, y'all know these classic engines. They'll run forever. So what I'm going to do... Um, I'll go ahead and end the video here. Uh, I know this video is getting kind of lengthy. Um, I'm going to let it run for a good 15 to 20 minutes before I list it. I want to make sure that it runs steady and runs decent and before I sell it off. Um, but like I said, I've had this motor for a little while um, that had a bad gas tank on it. and So I was just kind of looking for something that had a gas tank. Um, and then also we had to fix the valve on it. So we've done both of those things. It's in running condition now. Um, I think the more I run it, the better it's going to get. And so I'm just going to keep running it for a little while. And uh, I will uh, see what happens with it. Um, should make a good $60 to $70 mower for somebody. It's not going to make a lot of money. But it's one less mower that I have here. And you never know, I might get a trade on it. So I thank you all for watching as always. Um, you can catch me at in on Instagram and Facebook at LSMowers09. For any real-time updates of what I'm working on. Thanks again. I'll catch you on the next one.